exciting prototype news from DigiRig to talk about today, guys. How's it going? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. You know I like to carry my handheld ham radios on me, and, and you know I, th I like things like APRS, digital modes, all that stuff, but just having a good analog radio with you, something that does you know, VHF, UHF, and FM modulation, so you can talk on repeaters and you can talk on simplex, is really great. If everybody had the money, you know, go out and get yourself a THD 75 or one of the higher end handhelds and you'd have a really good radio. But, you know, I really love my VX6 and also my VX3. Those are relatively simple radios that have advantages that the D75 doesn't. For instance, this VX6 is submersible, and while well, the VX3 is literally like one of the smallest radios that's uh, that's ever been made. But the downside of that is that you then lose out on things like APRS because you have to add on things like a TNC, for instance, which this is a, that's a MobiLink TNC4 that connects via an audio cable into the radio and Bluetooth to your phone to do some of those things like automatic packet reporting system, which allows you to basically send text messages between radios, but also send them to things called a digipeter. Basically, it's a repeater for digital data, APRS packets, and have those connect to the internet at large. Well, this little guy in the middle there kind of bridges the gap and helps round out the solutions for actually all of the radios on the table here. This is a DigiRig Lite, and actually there's this, another one right there already connected to my laptop. This is a sound card that has PTT capability. Now, if you have a D75, you're thinking to yourself, well, why is the D75 here? I, I already have a radio that does everything, right? No. <laughs> As we found out during my live stream, the D75 shares the same type of hardware as the D74 in that for digital type stuff, it'll do D star for digital voice. But if we're talking about moving data, right, sending packets or anything along those lines, it uses what's called a terminal node controller, a TNC. That is primarily for packet information. But there's a whole growingly popular area of digital modes that doesn't use packet, and that's called VARA. VARA FM is a mode of operation we use for sending email over WinLink. Yeah, just like packet, but but VARA is even faster. With VARA on FM, there's also an HF version, you can send emails quicker than packet, but it's also really easy to interface between devices with just a sound card. So with this one little sound card and my laptop or my Android tablet, I can connect my radio, yeah, just about any radio, to the computer to be able to do VARA and other things even FT8 or other digital modes where we need to bypass the TNC on the D75 or just get the audio in and out of the other radios there, the, the dumber radios, if you will. Because all this guy's really doing is passing the audio that it's hearing coming in via the mic line and pushing out what the computer's sending it via the speaker line. Again, the advantage here is that this can also push to talk, PTT the radio, puts it into transmit, which means that the radio will transmit whatever it hears. So let me give you one example, setting this up to do VARA over WinLink, and then you can try this out for yourself when these become available. And I believe at the time of recording, there are some preliminary units that are on the website, and I'll post a link in the description for you to check it out. So this is a pretty inexpensive unit. If you flip it over here, it has the contact points for USB, and there's a rubber pad. It helps give you the friction you need to hold it into the port. And then on the other end, it has a tip ring ring sleeve connection. And that's what allows it to function as a sound card for something that has a speaker and a mic like this VX6. Now I happen to be using the TNC4 cable into this and, and that works great. I also use the DigiRig cable for Baofangs or the Kenwood style connector and you can get those off of the DigiRig site. Again, links are in the description for all this stuff. And you can see it goes tip ring sleeve, tip ring sleeve into tip ring ring sleeve. So I've already plugged this into my computer. I heard my computer beep, which means the computer acknowledged it. Let's take a look over on Windows and I'll show you how to set up the rest of this for doing VARA and just understanding how this system works. All right, so we're on Windows here. The first thing you wanna do is go to Device Manager. 
just start typing in device after you hit the Windows key. Now, unlike a lot of the things you'd expect if you're doing digital modes on your radio, it's not going to show up as a port. It's not uh, a USB serial port, like a COM or a printer port LPT type stuff. No, it's actually an audio input and output device. So if you go up here, uh, you're actually going to probably see a couple of things. But the ones you're looking for are the ones that say like a number and then USB audio device. If at any time you are unsure which device it is, leave this open up, this audio input, and then just pull the device out. If you take the little USB and yank it out of the, the computer, these uh, two of these guys are going to disappear, meaning the speaker and microphone will likely go away. So it looks like it's all connected over here. So we need to go ahead and bring up these sound settings. So this is the way I do it. You can do anything you want, but right click on speakers, go to open sound settings. Now there's, there's two things you're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at the output device and we're going to be looking at the input device. So let's start with the output device. Click device properties here and then go to additional device properties down at the bottom. Okay, so a little more beige windows, but you can rename this if you want to DigiRig Lite if you want to. Uh, this is my levels. You can change them however you want, but I found this works for me. Environments, I've disabled all enhancements. No bass boost, no surround, nothing like that. We don't need it. Uh, this is what I'm using, 16-bit, 40, uh, 48,000 hertz, DVD quality. And then spatial sound I have turned to off, okay? We don't need any modification to our tone or what we're doing. We just want that single speaker. That's all we need to mess with. So click back on the arrow. Scroll back up here for the microphone. Go into device properties. Same thing, additional details here. Again, you can rename this if you want. Listen, nothing changed there. Custom, make sure AGC is turned off. That must be off, okay? Mine is currently set to 46. I played with it a little bit higher, a little bit lower. It did make a big difference. And then channel 1, 16-bit, 48,000 hertz DVD quality. Okay, save that off. So that's pretty much all you have to do with the device. I'm going to close Device Manager. Now hit Windows again. I have loaded something called WinLink Express, which uh, you should do if you want to make Vara FM happen. You should also load Vara FM. I'll put links for both of those in the description. You need to have Vara up and running before you run this for the first time, uh, but I'm gonna walk you through how to get that set up. So let's move my little camera over here. So this is WinLink. WinLink is just a tool for doing email. Oh, apparently we have an update. Okay, sure, thought I already did that. Why not? Hey everybody, while you're watching this, keep in mind that while I am using this audio interface to do Vara FM, that doesn't mean you have to use that same interface. And if you have a different interface, the process is gonna be relatively the same, right? We're gonna look for the audio in and out, we're gonna set a PTT control, and then it's pretty much all WinLink after that point. So just keep in mind, I may have a different device than you, but the how-to is still gonna work just fine. And if you're interested in getting started in amateur radio, or you're just finding new things of interest Interests that are cool to you and you want to learn more, go check out my channel, the playlist, Are You New to Radio? Start here and watch any one of those ones that seems interesting to you and it'll help you out. Okay, where were we? WinLink is an email client software. And you can almost think of the sessions, right, which is right here, as different type of service providers. So this could say Google or Yahoo or AOL, I guess, or wherever you get your email from. This is just a different way of collecting the email, whether we're using Telnet or Packet, as we talked about earlier. But in this case, we want Vara FM. So go ahead and click that, and then click Open Session. And you should see a couple of windows pop up. The first thing we need to do is go play around with uh, Vara a second. So we'll do that now. Here's Vara. It is registered to me. And I highly recommend you pay for Vara. It's really good stuff. Anyway, go to Settings, Vara Setup. Now, under here, you want to make sure that you set your retries to 6, and your narrow versus wide is going to depend on the station that you're trying to contact, right? So I'm going to change this to wide, all right? Uh, allow Vara to check for updates? Absolutely. You want to keep this as updated as possible. All it will really do is tell you that you have an update, though. Uh, in some cases, you'll have to go download it, re-download to get the update. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Go close out of this. And then under settings, we want to go to sound card. And we want to make sure that this is pointing to that device, whether you renamed it or whatever you did, make sure that the device is selected. For PTT, you're probably not going to see this yet, but we're going to make that show up as RA board one. So if it go back and check and it should be there. 
channel. We're going to set it to L uh, for left, and then we can close. We'll come back to that, though, in a second because we're going to check out the PTT right now. So under Settings PTT, make sure that RA Board is selected. And again, if you followed already, AGC is turned off on the device, so good for you. We can say RA Board and then hit Close. All right, back to Settings, Sound Card. Now we should be able to hit the Tune button and red light is on on the radio. So we are PTTing, congratulations. That's actually what hangs up a lot of people. You are fairly along the line here to getting your email. So before you do any of this, you will need to make yourself a WinLink account. So go to the link in the description and set up your own WinLink account. It's usually attached to your call sign and you will need to load that information into the WinLink application here so that it knows how to log in for you when you actually try and retrieve your email. Okay. The other window that opened when we created the VARA session is kind of like the start and stop and the channel selection page, as I call it. So click channel selection, and you'll likely be greeted with a pop-up that says, hey, your, your page is really out of date. You need to update it. Do the update. You, you'll, be, you'll be glad you did. Um, I'm going to pick one of these guys and note the channel width. Notice they're all wide, almost every one of them, wide, 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 all the way down. So for wide, we're just going to go with this local one, 431090. Uh, so I'm going to double click on that. And now the frequency has changed. And it's noting that call sign that was selected. So on my radio, I'm just going to go 431090. Okay, now my radio matches the frequency that's on the application. And if I hit start, All right, we're connected to KK6CKK-10, and I'm going to attempt to download the emails. And if you watch the background here, here is the cool scatter plot of how we're how well we're picking up signals. So I went back to that first station. Uh, got a rough copy on them. Uh, it turns out Vara FM is not a fantastically uh, <laughs> used mode in my area, believe it or not. I guess we're still deeply in bed with uh, with Packet. But I did uh, I did get an email here. It looks like it's almost done wrapping things up. And there we go. Session disconnected. Not great though. Uh, but one <laughs> K4 KM4ACK says they got it working over uh, Vara. They're also using this uh, DigiRig Lite. If you haven't seen their video, go check out uh, Jason's video. It's very good. So I'm going to go ahead and reply to him here as well. And we'll post that to the outbox. Let's see if we can blast this off while, the, while that gateway is still operating in some fashion that's usable. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's telling me we got it. See those red dots? That sure should be green. <laughs> White's not good either. Oh, getting a little better, a little denser. Now, I will tell you, if you're going to play around with Windlink, the best thing to do is take your time. It, it's going to take you a while to find good gateways. It's going to take you time to get experience with how it kind of feels to make connections. I know feels such a weird word when it comes to radio, but uh, when you start communicating with a gateway, whether it's a good connection or not, to be honest with you, this is a pretty weak connection. You've seen me do a lot better over HF for sure and packet, no problem over packet. But yeah, we got a really bad signal to noise ratio here, a negative 0.5 dB. So that's just not working. And I'm not sure if that's the reported side. It looks like session... Mm, we weren't able to get that email out. So I may have to flip over to Packet to make this work. But the good news is, is our little DigiRig light is working. And that means this can go into any little kit along with the appropriate cabling. And we're set to go. So yeah, if you are interested in one of these devices, I'll have a link in the video description. You can check it out. Again, this is a prototype, but it's, it's real close to becoming a real thing that you'll be able to buy. Keep in mind that though, you may want to throw a little sh a heat shrink around that, right? Um, I'm, I'm going to do that after I made the video, but I thought it was kind of cool just to show it off in its bare PCB gloriousness. So anyway, I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this helpful or interesting, post a link in the video description and I'll talk to you real soon. 73.